uh, briefly on something that concerns you and that concerns me. Because as you know, the Bible cuts back and forth. Before it cuts you, it would have already cut me. I want us to read from John chapter 6, from verse 22 to 35. John chapter 6, from verse 22 to 35. I am the bread of life. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into boats and went into Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do, that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. From the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want us to ask ourselves a question. What brought you to Jesus? What brought me to Jesus? Some of us have come to Jesus for very many different reasons. The thing that brought you to Jesus is not necessarily the same thing that brought me to Jesus. But one thing is certain, all of us have come to Jesus. Now the Bible presents a scenario where Jesus had already fed people before. He had fed 5,000 men before. He had also fed 4,000 men before, not counting the, the women and the children who were present. So people were already in the habit of seeing that, ah, this Jesus, so it looks as if he's a bakery. Ah, this Jesus, so it looks as if the day that I don't cook in my house, uh, that's where I have to go to. This Jesus is a ready-made restaurant, it's a McDonald's, so it's a, in fact, free, and then he was giving it free of charge. So it's a free for all something. The day that I don't have, I just need to look for this Jesus and make sure that my stomach is full, then I go back home. The Bible makes us to understand that before Jesus gave the bread to the people, he gave God thanks. Now, most of us, we go through situations and we are unable to give God thanks because we think that we must thank God only when the going is good. Jesus thanked God ahead of the sharing of the bread because he understood that his communion, his fellowship with his father was enough to make the bread able for everybody to have. It is the same in church today. The presence of God is very available. The presence of God is not limited to particular people or particular places. If only we make ourselves available, the presence of God will also meet us at our point of need. If we also make ourselves willing, ready, and committed, the bread of life is ready to give all of us a portion from himself. We are preparing for women's conference. 
What is our objective? What is our reason? What is our rationale to come for the women's conference? Is it just because they say we should come? Is it because it is summer? Is it because we have been doing it before? Is it because others are going? Is it because we know the people who are going? Is it because, is it because, is it because? Or is it because we want our own share from the bread of life? Is it because we want our own little bits, our own little portion, our own little slice for the, from the bread of life? Jesus is in a scenario where he has fed people. And so the people are looking for him because they know that when they meet him, he will definitely give them something to eat. We are very concerned about the hands of Jesus. But we are not concerned about the heart of Jesus. Most of us have come to Christ because of what we stand to gain. And not what we stand to give up. Most of us have come to Christ today because we have seen that those who have come to Christ ahead of us, maybe they have mind-blowing testimonies. And so if we come to the same Christ that they have come to, we too will have mind-blowing testimonies. And so when we come to Christ and these testimonies are not forthcoming, our salvation becomes shaky. Our salvation begins to limp. Our salvation begins to suffer from epilepsy. Our salvation begins to have conversion. Because the thing that brought us to Jesus is not forthcoming. We forget that Jesus is interested in training our hearts to love him first, to be more like him first, before we can begin to get the benefits that are already in him. These people did not see the boat. They went ahead to take other boats to go and look for Jesus. Some of us are going helter-skelter, crisscrossing the group, globe, doing different things just to be in the place where we hear that there is Jesus because we want to see the things that Jesus has done because we want to be part of those who are trending. It looks as if when you are on Jesus' side, you are trending. So uh, let me just trend with the trending few. Or it looks as if this Jesus that I've been hearing about, well, he has something to offer. Let me just go there and see. Or maybe you missed the first episode of the 5,000 uh, that were fed and the 4,000 that were fed. And somebody has told you, you say, no, this time around, you will not miss it. You too want to be part of the item 11. You too want to be registered in the restaurant. You too want to see to eat that, that free for all bread that they are giving everybody. You are part of it. We forget that Jesus is not interested in the multitude. Jesus is not interested in the crowd. Jesus is not interested in much noise. There can be much noise in a place, but Jesus is not in it. When Jesus was, Jesus was not, he was not in the wind. He was not in the fire. He was not in the storm. He was in the gentle whisper. Jesus is interested in the one-on-one -on -one fellowship with him. Jesus is interested in the one-on-one -on -one communion with him. Jesus is interested in the one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. Jesus is interested in the one-on-one -on -one communication with him. Jesus is interested in the one-on-one -on -one interaction with him before he can begin to show us the things that he has in store for us. If we are committed to come to Christ only because we want to get the things that he has in store for us, the day we finish getting the things, we might as well tell Jesus goodbye. Say, Jesus, you know what? I got what I wanted, so I don't need you anymore. We need to come to Jesus because we want to relate with him as our father. Because we want to relate with him on a personal basis and not on a community basis. This is Jesus telling the people, you are seeking me. You are paying transport help from here to there. You are, you are doing this. You are sacrificing. You are doing this and that seeking me. But why are we seeking Jesus? Is it because we truly want to see the signs and the wonders and the things that he has envisaged for us after we relate with him? Or is it because we know that when we go there, we will just drop all our burdens and he will give us a yoke that is lighter and we'll just carry the yoke that is lighter and go our way. Jesus instructs us not to labor for food that perishes, but to labor for food that endures to eternal life. The blessings of God make it rich, yes, and added no sorrow, yes, but the blessings of God are valid while we are on earth. 
Are we the people who are coming to Christ because we only want the blessings of God to be valid while we are on earth? Yet we cannot transcend with these blessings into eternal life. Or are we the kind of people who are more concerned about making sure that the image of Christ is fully formed in us? That image that when God looks at us, he sees Christ in us. That image that when God looks at us, at us he says, yes, my daughter, my son. As a matter of fact, you are a son or a daughter whom I can boast of the way he boasted of Job. Or is God grieved by the blessings that he has given us? Is God saying that because I have blessed this my daughter, because I have blessed this my son, my daughter and my son have turned their backs on me? What brought us to Jesus? What brought you to Jesus? What brought me to Jesus? And the people go ahead to ask Jesus, what must we do? What must we do? Some of us today, we are in the presence of God, but we have never taken time to ask God, what must we do? In Acts chapter 16, the jailer, he asked Peter, uh, uh, Peter, uh, Paul and Silas, that what must I do to be saved? We are in the presence of God forever, forever, forever. But not a single day have we taken time to say, Lord, what must I do? What is it that you require of me? What is it that you will have me do? What is the instruction that you are giving me? We come to the presence of God only to make requests, requests, requests. Lord, give me this. Bless me with this. Meet me with this. Do this for me. Never have we asked God that God, what do you want me to do? Lord, what are you saying about this situation? Lord, what are you, what, what is your purpose? What is your will? What is, what is your plan for me? The Bible makes us understand in the book of Proverbs that many are the plans of a man, but it is the plan of the Lord that prevails. We don't even know the plan of the Lord. How can the plan of the Lord prevail in our life? The Bible says the plans that God has for us are plans of good and not of evil. Plans to bring us to an expected end and not any kind of end. But if we don't even know the plans of the Lord, how then would those plans be yes and amen in our lives? How do we know the plan of the Lord when our Bibles, we open them only on Sunday? That's if we even open them. Well, now, facilities and technology has made it such that there's flat screen, there's projector, there's iPhone, there's iPad, there's I, everything, I gospel. For us to read one Bible verse is a problem. So we, we, we only rely on what others have said about this, the word of God concerning our situation. We don't have any word for ourselves. So we are working on hearsay when we should be reading and knowing for ourselves. When was the last time that we took time to ask God that, God, what must I do? What do you want me to do? What are you saying? What is the instruction? The people ask Jesus, what must we do? And Jesus gives them the instruction. He tells them that he is the one whom God has sent from heaven. He is the bread of life. And because the people don't have understanding, the people don't study to show themselves approved. The people are shallow. The people don't have any knowledge in the word of God. They say, Jesus, give us this bread. I want to believe that they were expecting to see a very big loaf from a, 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 a refined bakery with everybody getting a bit of it. Little did they know that they were talking to the person himself who is the bread of life. Most of us today don't know who Jesus is to us. We only know Jesus at the superficial level. We only know that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to set us free. But we don't know him personally because we have not involved him in our different situations. To one person, Jesus is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. But to another person, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. To one person, he is Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord our banner. Or Jehovah uh, Nisi, the Lord our banner. But to another person, he is Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord our righteousness. Who is Jesus to us? What is that thing that we have taken to the Lord and committed into his hands and say, Lord, I come to you because I want to know you. Because I want to fellowship with you. Because I want to interact with you. Because I want to be close to you. Because I want to be your friend. Friends, bosom friends, reveal deep secrets to their, to their bosom friends. If Jesus is not our bosom friend, he cannot reveal deep secrets to us. He cannot reveal unseen things to us. He cannot reveal things that are, are, are complicated for the world to understand to us. If he is not our bosom friend, if he is not a friend who is closer than a brother to us. 
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, we must make an effort to go to Jesus before we, we, our hunger, our thirst, our everything can be quenched. We cannot sit in our comfort zones and expect that Jesus will come and meet us. The Bible says, draw near to me and then I will draw near to you. We must make an effort to go near to Jesus. The thief on the cross said, Lord, when you come, remember me. Remember me. What did he do before Jesus remembered him? He shot his friend, he shot his friend up and said, we are guilty of what we are guilty of. And that is why we are punished. This man is not guilty of anything. He identified the fact that there was something different about this Jesus. What is the difference that we have identified about the Jesus? That we can even begin to tell ourselves before we go ahead to tell the world. Are we in Christ because he's fashionable? Are we in Christ because we want our, our, our daily supplies to be met? Are we in Christ because others went to Christ? Are we in Christ because we saw that those who went to Christ were successful and so we too want that same success? Are we in Christ because we just know that, well, since this is what everybody is doing, let us just follow the crowd? Or are we in Christ because we want to know him one-on-one? -on -one? Because we want to have a fellowship with him? Because we want to be a reflection of Christ to the watching world. Because we want to be, the, the, we want the image of Christ to be fully formed in us. So that when we eventually transcend to the world beyond, we will not be afraid to approach the judgment seat. The Bible makes us understand in 1 John that love has no fear. If we are sure that we are living life, right with Christ with the help of the Holy Spirit, we will not be afraid of the life after this life. We can only be afraid if the kind of life that we are living on, on earth hmm, has many question marks. Why do we come to Christ? It is time for us to have a retrospective. If we know that Jesus is the one who is the bread of life, is the one who can give us, give food to those who are hungry, not physically hungry, but spiritually hungry, those who test hunger and test for righteousness. Righteousness is doing right before God and before man. When you hunger for those things, when you draw near to God, when you make yourself available in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of worship, in the place of fellowship, then God will say, oh no, this my daughter is serious. This my son is serious. I need to take him or her serious. I need to begin to do serious things with them. And then we'll be able to impact the world. And then we'll be able to make a difference. And then we'll be able to say yes, indeed, Serving Christ is, a, is something that is worth doing. It's something that is, is, is beneficial in life on earth and in the life to come. Let us re-examine our ways. Let us not attend women's conferences because they've said that we should come. Let us not attend women's conferences because it's a place to relax. Let us not attend women's conferences because, because, because. But let us attend women's conferences because we want to get to know God more. Because iron sharpens iron. Because we want to do, get our own piece of the bread of life. So that this piece will be able to shine more light in our respective corners. In our respective areas. In our respective lives. So that when you shine your light, I shine my light. Together, the world will be able to say, yes, this group of people are different. Not different by the way they look, but different because of their inner man. Different because of Christ in them who is the hope of glory. May God help us to come to Christ for the right reasons. And if we are in Christ for the wrong reasons, may God help us to get those wrong reasons right. If we are in Christ for the right reasons, may God help us to go better and better because there is always room for improvement. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen.